Good morning, everyone. This is Claire Bainon speaking from New Zealand, um, the city of Dunedin. It's dark here in the morning. We just say good morning. It's good afternoon or good evening, as Alexander would say. We've had some trouble getting online. Um, Alexander and Katja are, um, still have to join us. Um, there have been some technical interferences this morning, but welcome um, to this morning's um, Equinox webinar. Um, we'll start with an alignment, but before that I just want to mention that when Alexander and Katja and I met online yesterday to run through a few final pre-webinar details, we commented on the fact that each of us had called in from a different place. Alexander from New York City, Katja from Jerusalem, and I was ringing in from Dunedin, New Zealand. And in previous meetings, fellow members of our coordination group, that's um, Amir, Renee, Wendy, Maria Christina and Daniela brought their four countries and voices into our space. South Africa, which is where Amir is, he's in Johannesburg, Canada. Renee and Wendy are in Montreal, Belgium. Daniela is in Brussels and Brazil, where Maria Christina Amaral lives. So meeting today in our wider group, each of us attending the webinar is bringing something of the soul nature of our home country into resonance in this shared space. In a very palpable way, we're bringing together our different cultures and our spiritual traditions and geographies. North meets south, meets east, meets west. <laughs> this feels especially potent given the equinox and the turning of the seasons. We are heralding spring today in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern. So we'll begin our group alignment. We visualize the space as a vast yet intimate circle of receptivity and grace. We withdraw our consciousness from our personality discomforts and distractions. And relax deeply and expectantly into each other's presence and into the shared space of heart, group heart and soul. Together we breathe in the sense of shared purpose and intention. Standing united we know ourselves as individual souls within the greater group soul, meeting as a whole of many parts in a field of lighted love and spiritual will. We visualize for a moment our planet, suspended in space, surrounded by a shimmering network of light. This network is a collaborative art picturing of human and divine love. A mantle of protection whose unbreakable connections span time and distance, at the heart of which love and the will to good are our common language. This mantle of light lives and breathes in concert with both the heavens and the earth seeking to synchronize one with the other. Once lit, the lights in this network cannot be extinguished. Should one light pale, another will brighten by way of encouragement. This is a network of exquisite purity, clarity and beauty, whose light seeks only to be augmented, intensified and strengthened. Christ and the Buddha represent the West and the East and the spiritual union of hemispheres. Brothers in the light, they invite us to collaborate with them so that through a combination of loving intention and practical action, we might become increasingly effective in terms of bringing light into our own and humanity's dark places. Manifesting light in the mundane yet sacred world of everyday life. In politics, 
environmental and social arenas, via dilemmas and concerns of a deeply human nature. We envision, envision love in its hierarchical sense, free from sentiment and personal bias. Love that surrenders and seeks to understand, that acts with strength and decisiveness, motivated not by self-interest, but by the well-being of the whole. We imagine the steady and irreversible illumination of humanity and affirm our earth as a sacred, radiant and peaceful station of light, being steadily transformed by love. And we contemplate for a moment how our work together today and in the future might aid in the practical manifestation of Christ's love in the world. Together, we say the mantra of the light. Radiance we are and power. We stand forever with our hands stretched out, linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. We reach into the light and bring it down to meet the need. We reach into the silent place and bring from thence the gift of understanding. Thus, with the light we work and turn the darkness into day. Thank you. I'm wondering if Alexander and Katja have been able to join in yet. I'm here. Hi, Katja. Yes, yes, hello. Hi. Is um, Alexander with you? Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't have connection with him, but meanwhile, I want to just say that, um, I'm in Israel, but I moved from Jerusalem and, uh, I'm now with a Russian group at the Mount Tabor, the Mount of Transfiguration. And it's a very special place to be at this particular moment and time because, you know, an hour 45 minutes, we crossed the line of the new year, new astrological year. So our cycle of light began again. And um, it is very quiet, it's a special quietitude here. This sound of present, the sound of the master. And uh, speaking of sounds, you know, I hope it is, I hope it is Alexander and trying to, and trying to connect. Uh, yes, okay. hello everyone. I could finally Hi. managed to connect and reestablish my connection. Oh. Great. Perfect. Hello. And a Hello. perfect time. Please Alexander, would you tell me where we are now? We have just completed our alignment and heard from Katja, and um, the next step is for you to speak with us about the focus on the years and on this coming um, cycle. Thank you. So I can operate um, the slide from my end if that's right with you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Um, before I uh, will share with you our year focus, I want to express our gratitude 
to everyone who contributed to the process of meditation on, on the vision, the plan, and what are the tasks ahead of uh, us as world servers in this cycle. Uh, as you know, uh, the coordination group uh, been in the process of uh, virtual retreat since uh, Libra uh, last year, and uh, we asked for contribution for your contribution during Scorpio and Sagittarius time. And we grateful to everyone, to all our uh, participants of our circle and uh, presenters who ever presented at our webinars for contributing their ideas and impressions. And so what we're going to present today is the summary and the synthesis of all those impressions that we harvested during this period. And uh, we're happy to share with you that our plan for the year and that the year focus for us will be radiating the living light of the soul, grounding the real. So, Katja, the yes. microphone to you. Okay. So, this is our understanding how we see the focus for the next year. Radiating the living light of the soul, grounding the real. We see that humanity undergoes the initiation process, recognizing the light of the soul. Everywhere we look, we see the patterns of upheaval as light exposes here to hidden shadow areas for the purpose of the healing on individual, group, and collective levels. As individuals and as a collective, we see that the most effective and enduring instrument we have for the transmutation of our accumulated debts is love. The energy of love. And in order to face the depth of the collective shadow lands, or as we say, the dweller, we need to express the fire of the will to love. The coming Aquarian age invites world servers to ground the real into physical manifestation, shifting steadily from the ethos of the mentally focused idealism to a living expression characterized by proactivity and practically in alignment with the cosmic order. In the current cycle, the 2025 initiative is committed to bring the focus of world servers to the following areas. Assisting with the externalization of the hierarchy. We see it as one of the major priorities for all world servers in the current cycle. Intentionally aligning together in the group heart, we form a radiant and receptive chalice, bridging together the human and spiritual kingdoms. The group of world service is the planetary Ajna center. We are call, called to hold the vision for the future of humanity. Individually and as a group, we are learning to align our personal service to the divine plan. Our second focus this year would be on the telepathic integration of the world service group. We are all energy beings functioning and communicating with each other and with the universe via etheric connectivity. We all recognize the importance of you know, realization and alignment of our individual etheric centers, the paths for the energy 
through our body. This year we will be focusing on practicing, aligning those individual centers in what we call the center of the group, as we see the group as one being also having those centers as well as new group of world service. The world service are called to learn the science of impression and expression for the expansion of group consciousness and for deepening understanding in of the inner realities. We aim to support the emergence of a horizontal communication infrastructure within the world service group and uh, the development of a vertical alignment and attunement with the emphasis on the inner sound hearing the sound of the divine plan for our planet as humanity we are the enablers of the plan so our task is to manifest in our personal lives and in our immediate environment, the changes that we wish to see in the world. Our life energy is our most vital and powerful currency. We must endeavor to invest it with discernment and insight. The new economy is emerging as a result of the choices that we make individually and as a group. We recognize the need for disciples to engage in a process of radical and courageous self-inquiry as we face our own dweller with compassion and honesty, bringing tolerance and love to both our own and each other's imperfections. We are called to become role models Living congruent lives is in itself a service. Our own radiance is perhaps the clearest evidence of a living Christ at work in the world. It's perhaps the hardest work we do. We emphasize the need to learn and to practice etheric and embodied living. We seek also to communicate the Ageless Wisdom teachings in light of their practical meaning for individual and collective transformation with an emphasis on the value of a um, how-to approach. All these priorities we will seek to express through our program of activities this year. Through our full moon cycle, through the cycles of the solar festivals, we will bring the focus to 10 seed groups, emphasizing and meditatively supporting the diversity of service activities in humanity, utilizing available energies of the solar festival cycles. Through the cycle of the new moon uh, webinars, we will continue our work on meditative support of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, relating each goal to energetic opportunities presented by each astrological energy during the new moon cycle. We will continue working with the four-bit cycle of the equinoxes and solstices, focusing on Earth as the living planet in the living cosmos, exploring the opportunities of the four-bit cycles of solstices and equinoxes. We will bring the focus to the emergence of the telepathic infrastructure within the World Service Group through Gemini Sagittarius Access events. Those are the Gemini online conference 
and the Sagittarius focus meeting of, pre of the presenters. We will continue our work on the preparation for the Vesak festival in the first day of the uh, seven day period, coming together in the planetary alignment with representatives of all the continents coming together in meditative alignment. We will keep our focus on the opportunity of the seven year cycle of the festival week of the World Service Group that in 2019. We will keep this focus through the annual cycle the line of alignment with Jerusalem localized by the Hikal group uh, from Jerusalem. You can download the calendar of events uh, from the handout section uh, of the control panel, along with the concept note for uh, this year. And we invite you to join us on this journey. We see it as our collective adventure, our collective journey in our steady movements to the light. And as I said, our focus this year during the full moon period will be on the 10 seed groups. We see it as one of the most practical frameworks for the manifestation of the divine plan. And now I want to invite a member of our coordination group, René, uh, from Montreal in Canada, to open our year program with a presentation on the 10 seed groups. Okay, many thanks, uh, many thanks, Alexander. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I will begin this uh, short presentation by just uh, talking about the origin of the 10 seed groups. Uh, all the quotes that I will be uh, uh, quoting today are from Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 1, page 36 to 43. And on page, page 43, we see this little passage, which is very interesting. Master DK, he says, in, in a discussion with Master Kutumi, we have uh, often wondered how we should aid in the inauguration upon earth of the new type of work which will aid the inauguration upon the planet of the new age very interesting and the they were devising about uh, what would be in fact the next step that uh, humanity should develop in each one of 10 domains of human activities and uh, I will present you in the 10 C groups these ideas that they came with to support the progress of humanity in the coming centuries. And in their discussions, they were uh, wondering about what were the requirements that they should look at uh, for the, uh, the people, the uh, disciples and aspirants that would uh, cooperate with that, with that project. So he said that we decided that four things much first, first of all, distinguish the group uh, which should be uh, formed. And uh, these characteristics were sensitivity. The first one is sensitivity to soul contact and responsiveness to intuition. The second one was impersonality which means the decentralization from the self. The third one was soul powers. 
And these soul powers are a capacity to respond to the intuitive ideas and to the higher contacts, and also a capacity to respond, respond rapidly to the needs of the people. And finally, a right perception of reality without glamours and illusion, which means, in fact, the work on ourselves to purify our personality, to be cleared of our glamours and illusion. And the last uh, requirement, finally, was the mental polarization, which is the capacity to face the world from the level of the soul, because the soul, as we know, is on the higher mental plane. And so what are the objectives of these 10 seed groups? The objective, Master Liki says, is not to train individuals, but to train groups, to train them to provide channels for the distribution of certain types of, force, of forces into the world. And the method used, in fact, is group work. It's easily said group work, <laughs> but uh, a little bit harder to do because it means that in order to really be able to work as a group, we need to go through and beyond our emotional reactivity and decentralize from ourselves and then access the real love of the soul. The and also the technical method to be developed is to develop the clarity and power of the meditation, which implies that the personality has been completely mastered and is used by the soul as an instrument of creativity. So these C groups, these 10 C groups are an experiment that was started in 1943 by Master DK. And uh, he said that these uh, seed groups are, in fact, an experiment in founding focal points, which are, in fact, groups of specialized people, which can, uh, in fact, uh, hold certain energies that can flow into humanity, into 10 fields, as we have said. And this experiment is to inaugurate new techniques of work in 10 fields. These 10 seed groups are an, an inter externalization of 10 inner groups or 10 subjective groups that are related to the ashrams. And these 10 inner groups form, form in fact, one large group. And these groups must become objective on the physical plane through the disciples and aspirants that will choose to work on them. And finally, these 10 C groups aim at manifesting certain types of spiritual energies that will produce cohesion and advancement on, on the earth and boost the human progress. So we describe the work of the group, but what does it mean for individual disciples like us? What does, it, what, does it, it, what does it imply if we want to participate to that experiment? So it implies a capacity to tune ourselves, to be in an attachment with our group brothers and sisters in order to be able to work as a group. It implies the alignment with our soul and with our inner group. In fact, the subjective group, which is the cause of that externalization that we have to create. And it, it implies also the mastery of the domain that we are supposed or that we have been prepared to express on earth. So it means uh, discovery of who we are, it, it implies the study of our subject and the development of the skills that we will have to embody through our group. So I will now describe these seed groups, which are in fact seeds for the future in each field. So the first group is called the telepathic communicators. 
the work of that group is to work on the mental plane with the thought matter. And their work is to receive and direct the thought currents so that the communication will be facilitated and the methods whereby speech can be transcended. So that it means that we are preparing the way for a type of communication in the future where we will not use speech anymore, but communication will be done directly in two methods, from soul to soul, on the higher levels of the mental plane. And communicating from the higher level of the mental plane involves a complete alignment from soul, mind, and brain, so that the brain, the mind, are aware of the soul itself, and they are completely one. The second method is also mental. It is from mind to mind, but then it is on the lower aspect of the mental plane. This involves the complete integration of the personality, the integration of the parts of the lower self, so that the mind and the brain are one. And so that group will, in its work, use three centers, which means that during their work or in their work, their energy is focused on the head, the heart, and the throat centers. And the techniques uh, and, in fact, the knowledge needed to develop that in these telepathic capacities is uh, described in the book, the Bailey book, Telepathy and the Etheric Vehicle. The second group, which is the trained observers. The trained observers work on the astral plane at the dissipation of glamours. The glamours are these, in fact, <clears throat> emotional charges and desires like clouds that are just over humanity. And they, in fact, by their kind of uh, presence, the instill fear and separativity and all the other glamours that we know about uh, in humanity. And so they greatly delay the progress of humanity by, in fact, controlling uh, unconscious, in fact, the parts of us that are unconscious and all the masses of people that are deeply unconscious of what is happening on the astral plane. And they think that it is from within themselves, all these fears and and all the emotional uh, drama that they, that they live, they think it is them. It's them, but it's also very much uh, accentuated by this big dark cloud that is pressing these energies on them. And so that group is working at dispelling that cloud and then bringing illumination to mankind. So their work, in fact, is to bring in the light from the inner planes from the buddhic plane and from the mental plane and to bring it into the astral plane. And there with that beam of light to dissipate the glamours and the darkness, because as we know, when there is a beam of light, darkness disappears. And so this is a great service that they will do to the whole of humanity. And this is the first preparatory work the, the case says that we have to do for the inauguration of the new age to free humanity from these very, very heavy react, emotional reactivities that we see everywhere. And the centers that they are using are the head, the heart, and the solar plexus centers. They use that consciously into their work of dissipation. And the techniques and the uh, the ritual that is uh, used for that has been presented in the book Glamour of World, a World Problem by Alice Bailey. The third group is the magnetic healers. So this group, um, in fact, will uh, complement very much the work of the allopathic doctors as we know them today. And in the new age, in fact, Many, many doctors, if not most doctors, will also be healers at the same time. And so instead of working mainly on the symptoms, as is presently the, the case, 
they will develop the capacity to work at the same time at the level of the causes behind the symptoms. And the work will be done in the intelligent transmission of spiritual energies to the mental, the astral, and the etheric body by the right organization and circulation of force through the etheric body. And to do that, they in fact bring the energies from the higher, the higher levels, the healing energies through their head center, and then they bring it into their heart. And then they focus it through their Ajna center and their hand to the, the etheric center or chakras that are related to the problem. So this healing will be carried by groups of healers. And even if a doctor works alone, you will subjectively always be related to his inner group, of his healing group, of which he is part of. And they will act as intermediaries between the planes of spiritual energies and the patient or group of patients. So they will not work as soul, excuse me, they, they will always work as souls and not as individuals. And they work as unit in a coherent whole. So the knowledge and the technique about esoteric healing has been presented in the book, Esoteric Healing of Ferris Bailey, which is a very interesting book. Really. The fourth group is the educators in the new age. Their service is to bring in the new type of education. They will act at, as communicators and transmitters of two aspects of divine energy, knowledge and wisdom. This means that the educator of the future will not only deal with learning concrete knowledge and skills, but also in addition of, a, of that, also a study of the spiritual laws and principles and the methods to access our own inner wisdom. So it will be a very, very much extended type of education that will help people not only to know things, but to discover themselves and to becoming really deeply creative as a soul. So this group is a direct intermediary between the higher mind and the lower mind. They are concerned with the building of the Antakarana, which is that bridge between the lower mind and the, and the higher mind. And that, uh, in, in fact, their work will be through the, the establishing of that bridge within each individual through the educational system. It will be to establish a group Antakarana between the kingdom of souls and the world of man on the planet. So this uh, work uh, and in this realization, the cases will happen at the end of the next root race, which is the sixth root race. And then humanity will have in their mental consciousness, in fact, into their brain consciousness, the consciousness of the soul itself. So they are using in their work, the head center, the Ajna center and the throat centers. And their work is presented in the book, The Edu Education in the New Age by Alice Bailey. The fifth group, the political organizers. This group will concern itself with political factors in every nation, which means to <laughs> deal with all the political things that we see every day on the TV. But in addition to that, they will work into the world of human government dealing with the problems of civilizations and with the relationships existing between nations, which means that the focus will, will shift very much from personal political gains to fur furthering civilization and also developing good relationship between nations, which means 
that the borders as we know them and the walls as we know them will not be emphasized anymore as well as the wars, but cooperation. So they will work at international understanding, which will be their major objective. This group interest, interestingly communicates the quality of imposition and an, and an authority that is lacking in the other branches of the divine group activity. They will work largely through the first three. It will embody the method whereby the divine will works out in the consciousness of the races and nations. And most of these workers will be Rewan. They will have Rewan in their equipment for sure. And their work will be to act as communications between the department of the Manu, which is the department of the first ray, and the race of men. In their work, they will use consciously the head, the heart, and the basic center. There is no specific book in, the, in Bailey uh, on that because it's a, it's a group on the, what we call the hard line, one, three, five, seven, and the Bailey books are mainly on the two, four, six, but we find everywhere in the books, all the principles that will be at the basis of their work which are aimed to develop brotherhood, brotherhood and goodwill on the, on the planet. So the sixth group, the workers in the field of religion. Their work is to formulate the universal platform of the new world religion. It is a work of loving synthesis and it will emphasize the unity and the fellowship of the spirit, in fact, the one God, emphasizing that we are one humanity. This group is in a pronounced sense, a channel for the activity of the secondary of love wisdom and that of the world teacher, an office which is held presently by the Christ. The platform of the new world religion will be built by many groups from all religions, working under the inspiration of the Christ and of the master Jesus, and also for, from the influence of the secondary to transcend the divisions on the ways to approach divinity. In their work, they use the head, the heart, and the solar plexus centers. The seventh group, the scientific servers. They will reveal the essential spirituality of all scientific work, which is motivated by the love of humanity and its welfare. And not as we see it very often, science for profit and for wars, but a, a science which will relate at the same time religion with scientific knowledge and bring to light the glory of God through the medium of his tangible world and his works. And in fact, by being more open, by going to the study of the tangible, they will go beyond that and they will be able to touch the spiritual principles behind the manifestation of the form. They have a most interesting function, but one that will not become evident for a long time, which will be to reveal the secrets of electricity and to bring what we call free energy, which means that humanity will benefit from this, uh, in fact, infinite spiritual energy to in fact relieve people from work and from the most of the necessities of life so it, the, the physical life will be very very much facilitated by that so that people will have time to invest on the inner development but it will not come from a long time it will not uh, come into manifestation for a long time until the building force of the universe are better understood 
and until we really develop brotherhood so that these forces will not be used to exploit our brothers and sisters. And this work, when we will be at that stage where we can see through the forms and reveal the inner secrets, will come with the development of the etheric vision, which will come with the new root race. All the children will be able to have a vision on the etheric plane, as today we have it on the physical plane. The centers that they use are the head, the throat, and sacral centers. The eighth group, the psychologists, they would be concerned with the revelation of the fact of the soul and with the new psychology, which will be based upon the seven ray types and the new esoteric astrology. Their major task will be to relate and fuse through approved techniques, the soul and the personality, and not just limit themselves as is presently the case very often to the work on the emotional plane and bringing well-being to the personality, but they, they will work at bringing a revelation of the divinity within each person, so that helping each individual to discover the God within. They will also act as transmitters of illumination between groups of thinkers and as illumina illuminators of group thoughts. As they transmit <clears throat> the, the energy of ideas, in fact, we will realize that the world of ideas is a world of dynamic forces, and that these ideas have to be contacted consciously and noted, and then energy, their energies will be assimilated and transmitted. So what this means is that in the future, psychology will work with the realm of thoughts. And when we know that the thoughts are the energies that direct the emotions and that they also direct the behaviors, it would be a method that would be available for humanity to really uh, further the progress so that the progress of individuals, their integration as personality and their fusion with the soul will be much, much more accelerated and facilitated by that work. In their work, they use the head, the heart, the solar plexus, and the throat centers. And their work is presented into the Bailey books, Esoteric Psychology, Volumes 1 and 2. The ninth group, the financiers and the economists. They will work with the energies and forces which express themselves through the interchange and the value of commerce. They will deal with the laws of supply and demand and with the great principle of sharing, which ever governs divine purpose. But we are not there yet. See? <laughs> it's, uh, it is to be discovered and really implemented by humanity. And interestingly, they will be the members of that group, the great psychometrical workers. For a psychometrist is one whose soul is sensitive to the soul of others and consequently to their real needs, not to their desires. So that the uh, real needs of all forms of life and mainly for humanity and the different nations will be met through this principle of sharing, which will govern economic relations in the future. So, as you see, there is some work to do there, and it, it will be quite a change on humanity where they, when their work will, will fruit, will be fructified. So, this group uses uh, consciously the head, the heart, the throat, and the sacral centers. And finally, the tenth group is called the creative workers. They are the they are communicators between the third aspect of divinity, which is more the formal aspect, the creative aspect, and its 
uh, as it expresses itself through the creative work and it, in response to the thought world, which is the world where the divine thoughts coming from the divine plan are manifested. And so they are, in fact, communicators between the third aspect of divinity and the first aspect of divinity, which is the life aspect. So they link and blend life and form in a creative way. They are closely related to the nine group because today, unknowingly and without any true understanding, they are bringing about a concretization of the energy of desire. And this, in turn, brings about the creation of things. Incidentally, therefore, they are concerned with the concretization of money. Their work is, all, is, all, is also largely phys philosophical and concerned with the task of relating, factually and scientifically, the nine other types of groups so that they may work creatively upon the physical plane and the divine plan may clearly appear as a result of this synthesis that they will bring about. So, in fact, their work is to create uh, the forms that are aligned with the divine plan, that are in line with the divine plan, that will be helpful for the nine other groups to do their work. So they will be, in fact, the synthesizers and also the organizers of the nine other groups, the, the support group, if you want, so that the other ones will have the tools and the means and the money to do their work. So in their work, they use the head, the heart, the sacral, and the base centers. So in conclusion, we could say that the function of these seed groups is to seed the new and spiritual approach to spiritual living in all the domains of human activity. Their work, if it succeeds, will greatly accelerate the progress of humanity by giving, by giving clear guidelines about the essential points to be developed in each domain. So what do these seed groups entail for the members of the new group of World Service? It entails for each one of us to discover our specialty, our field of service, for which we have been prepared for a long time by our soul. And most of us take a long time to discover who we are. And in fact, what are our specific gifts? the specific things that we can bring to humanity. This is what we call our specialty. And every spiritual worker has to become a specialist to bring a very uh, clear and uh, very practical, uh, I could say, enhancement or contribution to this planet. It enters also to develop the knowledge and the skills we need in our work so that it's not, it's not enough to know what is our field, but we really have to develop the knowledge and study and develop the practical skills in, our, in order to do our, our work. And by doing it, we will meet our companions in our C group and then more and more consciously work with them in a cooperative manner to serve humanity. And progressively, through the guidance of, our, of our, our inner light, we will find our way and our role in our group of service. So as you see, these nine and these 10 C groups is a great contribution and a great help that the masters, Master DK, in fact, the hierarchy uh, brought to us in order to really enhance the progress of humanity without having to search for these answers only through trial and errors. At least we have some basis, some basis, some hypothesis from which to work on. And this is our work to develop that and see how we can implement them 
in the world, in our in our world around us, and to contribute. Okay, thank you. You continue our equinox alignment, equinox celebration with meditation. And I invite Wendy uh, to lead us in meditation. And I ask you to whatever impressions come to you during this webinar during this meditation after that please write them down and share with us uh, via email afterwards wendy the floor is yours okay hello everyone uh, this meditation will include a practice given to humanity by master dk the practice can be found in the Alice Bailey book, Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 2, um, page 126. In this meditation, Master DK tells us that this practice provides a way to produce a group fusion of purpose. As we as a group enter the new astrological cycle of the year, all participants in this endeavor, which includes presenters, organizers, and participants, we all have the opportunity to move together toward the light in the creation of a group fusion of purpose. So let us begin with preparation by becoming, first of all, physically relaxed and as comfortable as possible. And begin to breathe rhythmically consciously relaxing all aspects of the physical body. Then observe your emotions and become emotionally calm and serene. Speak to the emotional body, telling it to relax until it becomes quiescent and a noticeable serenity pervades the feeling nature. And now, clear the mind of all thoughts, but remain mentally poised and alert. We will now focus in the heart center between the shoulder blades. Imagine this center as being composed of electrical blue-white lines spherically shaped, which conduct the golden energy of love into your emotional body.
then focus your aspiration and attention in the Ajna center directly in front of your forehead, realizing that when you do this, you are now in touch to some degree with your higher mind, the residence of your soul. And now align and establish contact with your soul. Identify as the soul by saying to yourself, I am soul, soul am I. I am soul. Soul am I. And from this point of alignment with the soul, move into the following visualization. Picture to yourselves an ocean of blue. And upon the horizon can be seen slowly rising a blazing sun. Picture yourself as throwing yourself into the ocean, free of all encumbrances, worries, anxieties, and cares, and as swimming towards a rowboat lying midway between you and the rising sun. As you swim, you become aware of your group brothers and sisters also swimming in the same direction. You recognize know and love each other. Then visualize yourself as climbing into the boat. When all the group are in, then see yourselves as each grasping an oar and together rhythmically and steadily rowing towards the rising sun. This is harmony of stroke, of purpose, and of direction. Then see between you and the rising sun, a figure moving toward you. It will be the master of your group coming from the light in your direction. In the clear pathway of the light, you can see him distinctly.
and all of you in the boat see him together as a group. And then say inaudibly, yet as a group, into the light we move, beckoned thereto by thee. Out of the dark we come, driven thereto by the soul of all. Up from the earth we spring and into the ocean of light we plunge. Together we come. Together we move, guided and led by the soul we serve and by thee, the master we know. And remaining aligned with the soul, reflect on the following seed thought. Radiating the light of the soul, grounding the real. Radiating the light of the soul, grounding the real. After reflecting on the seed thought, release the words, holding the mind still, attentive and receptive to the energy behind the seed thought that is coming from the soul.
register consciously the impressions received by the mind from the soul during the stage of reception. Then visualize the received energies flowing into and transforming your mental body. Your emotional body. and your physical etheric body. And see these energies radiating the light to the soul. And grounding the real. And while saying the great invocation, let us visualize the light, love, and will to good from the spiritual hierarchy pouring through the five planetary inlets, London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, and Tokyo, irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known. Let purpose guide the little wills of men. 
the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thanks to everyone for joining our circle today. So onwards and upwards we move together rowing the boat. Um, you see on the screen the announcement for our coming webinars. So the first webinar the full moon webinar in the series focusing on intensive groups will be uh, focused on the group of political organizers. And our presenter will be Alex Ratcliffe from the United Kingdom. And the topic of representation will sound a little bit different than it's on the screen. Uh, taking back control, discerning truth and finding clarity in the complex information age. And our next New Moon webinar will be on April 17th. And we will work, we will utilize the energies of areas to work with the goal number three, good health. Please, please share your impressions with us via email and we'll continue our journey together. Thank you.